Hi, everybody, and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions, my podcast about knitting, spinning, and sewing. My name is Tommy, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 33 of my podcast. I am so happy you're here. Thank you so, so much for joining me today. Welcome to any new viewers, and welcome back to any returning viewers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, today is a really on and off kind of cloudy, sunny <laughs> Friday here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. I did skip recording last week, uh, so I've got a lot to show you today. Um, there's a Ravelry group for this podcast. That is where you'll find the show notes to this episode and all previous episodes. Everything I talk about in all of my podcasts, you can find links to and information for in the show notes. So go check that out if you're interested. Uh, the Ravelry group is also where you will find knit along stuff and giveaway stuff, neither of which we have going on right now, but um, you know, that's where it is when I have it. <laughs> um, hopefully I've got another knit along coming soon. I have not thought of anything yet, but when inspiration strikes, you will be the first to know. I can't wait until that happens. I'm sorry if I'm distracted. My I got a sliding glass door right in front of me and my cat was sitting outside watching me and then she went and got into like attack position and scattered off. So I don't, I don't know what's going on, but. <laughs> so um, <laughs> thank you for being here. Um, I'm out of practice, obviously. Um, I'm drinking some tea today. It's cold today. It is freaking cold. I feel like fall is coming. Um, where I live on the, um, right on the coast of far northern California, it's really temperate here and, um, summer, winter, fall, and spring don't have, like, we don't get any extremes pretty much. Um, so throughout the summer you get really cold foggy days and throughout the winter you sometimes get nice sunny days. And today it's cold. So I'm drinking some tea. It's really good. Herbal tea. Today I am wearing my girl from the grocery store shawl. I don't hardly ever wear shawls on the podcast, um, but I am today because it's cold. Uh, and this is a wonderful, awesome shawl pattern written by Hohi Locatelli. And I knit this out of some of my hand spun. It was a loop bump that I spun. It's a gradient. I left it as a single ply and knit this amazing shawl. So I love it and it's keeping me warm today. Okay, what, what am I gonna talk about now? I gotta figure this stuff out. Okay, FOs. Have, <laughs> so out of practice. I'm gonna jump into it with some FOs. I've got one to share with you this week and I'm super excited about it. They are my Taunus socks. They are done and I love them. And this was a pattern written by Becky Sorensen. It's a sock pattern. And they are done and I love them. The yarn that I used was Space Cadet Yarns in the Azara Base, which is BFL and Nylon, in the Gentle Colorway, which is this really pale pink, which is like so pale that it's like coming up bright nothing. So here's a close up. It is a beautiful textured sock pattern um, with the New Depths Heel, which is a heel pattern that Becky wrote and includes in the pattern. I um, made a couple modifications to the pattern. I did the smallest size, which was 56 stitches around, and I did the cuff on a size zero, the rest of the sock on a size one. Um, she calls for a German twisted cast on, which I did do and I love, and I'm a convert. I'm gonna do that for every sock from now, from now on. Um, but she calls for a twisted ribbing on the cuff. I did a plain one by rib, one by one ribbing because that's what I prefer. And then I followed the pattern, I did her heel, um, but for the toe, I did my usual rounded toe with the Kitchener finish, um, which I do on all my socks because I love and it fits my foot really good. And um, if you are interested in how I do that toe, I have notes written about it for my size in um, a sock project page that I have on Ravelry, which is the Pandora socks. So if you're interested in how I do my toes, check out my Pandora socks project page on Ravelry and I give detailed notes on how I do it. 
I love it. It fits really, really well. It's a rounded toe, so it's got, instead of increases or decreases on either side, it's got them all the way around, so it's kind of like a hat decrease. And then at the end, instead of decreasing down to a point, which a lot of toes like that do, I stop when I have a certain amount of stitches and then Kitchener just a little less bit. So it's round, but it's a little bit flat at the end. I love it. So here is the other one. And these socks were super duper fun to knit. I had a really good time knitting them. Becky um, from the Stringing It Together podcast, the designer behind this pattern, is hosting a knit along for these socks right now. So go check that out if you're interested. Um, I believe it's being held in her Ravel Ravelry group for her podcast. If I'm wrong about that, I'll correct myself down here somewhere, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Stringing it together. Ravelry group. Check it out for the night along. I was super happy to get these done. I have not worn them yet, but I will now that I have shown them to you. And I still haven't checked to see which pair of socks this is from a box of socks, but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty on track. I'm keeping up super good. I'm gonna have 12 pairs of socks by the end of the year. I know it. Confidence. It's all about confidence, right? Okay. Did I say everything I needed to about those? Yeah. I love them. I super love them. Whips. Let's move on to whips after I beverage a little bit. My first one is a shawl that I've been working on for a while. And I'm so excited to be almost done with it. I wanna be all the way done with it so bad. <laughs> I'm not yet. It's my Rebel 2 shawl. So here it is. It is brioche. It is the last vestige of my brioche obsession this year. Um, so I hosted a brioche knit along. I got super obsessed with brioche over these past several months. And um, this is the project that I cast on with the most brioche in it. Um, my two other brioche projects were projects that just had a section of brioche. This thing is all brioche. And while I love brioche, I'm getting sick of it. <laughs> I'm over it. I want this thing to be done so bad. Um, you know what it is? Here, let me show you what it is. Let me, let me show you the shawl. And then I will tell you what it is. So here it is. It is a lovely, wonderful pattern. And I do quite love it. This is the Rebel by Leslie Ann Robinson. And I am doing the Rebel 2 version, which is the two color brioche version. And it's a crescent shaped shawl and you can see my wonderful little narwhal on there from frosted betty's and where do i start how about the yarn i'll start with the yarn i don't know why this is so hard <laughs> this is what i have left of the yarn and it's gorgeous and i love it my main color is this pink, and this is Moonstone Dye Works, which is my hand-dyed yarn company, in the F Me Pumps colorway. This is on my Merino Singles base, which is a single-ply superwash merino. And then this is Woolen Vine Yarns in her Nouveau base, which is also a single-ply, 100% superwash merino, in the Goth Day Cake colorway. And I love these colors together so much. I am pretty sure I'm gonna use a Blake all of my yarn. Um, I have this morning just finished the second to last section of the shawl. So now all I have left to do is the border, which is the last section. And all that is, is eight more brioche rows, which the way I'm keeping track of it is 16 actual rows. So that's all I have left to do. And then I am done and I cannot wait. So there is a lot of plain brioche in this. There is a sea of plain brioche in this shawl. Um, along the edges, if you'll notice down here where my elbow is, <laughs> there is a line of um, these little things that run up it. And then now there's, and down here, 
when you're doing it and you've got these little things that you're working, they are, you do like one or two on either side of every, of the row every once in a while. So you've got, you do one little thing, you do a bunch of brioche and then you do the other little thing and then you're done with the row, right? Well, up here where I am now, you've got them all across the whole row. And I think that's what's starting to annoy me. I love brioche, but I don't necessarily love increasing and decreasing in brioche. I find it to be kind of annoying. So I've been doing a lot of that and I'm so happy that this last border part, I think there's a, there's a lot of it too, but um, I'm almost done. And I'm so excited. So I am, oh, and I feel like I keep calling these things like flowers. I don't think that's what they're supposed to be. So I am just copying Melissa from Knitting the Stash, which is an awesome podcast that I super love. You should check it out if you have not yet. She knit one of these shawls too, and it took her way less time to knit hers than I'm taking to knit mine. She knit hers like super fast, and it's beautiful. She called these little spaceships, I think, because this is the Rebel shawl, which was inspired by Star Wars. So she thinks these are spaceships. That was her interpretation. And I like that, so I'm going with that. Now, it could say in the pattern. I don't know. I don't usually read, like, the intros to patterns. Anyway, I'm knitting this on a size 5, my Haya Haya Sharps for my interchangeable set. This is on a 40-inch cord, which is perfectly adequate and lovely. And... I'm ready, you guys. I'm ready to move on. I can't wait to move on. Um, so that's the front side. This is the back side. I can't wait to wear it. It's gonna be super squishy. And as soon as I am done with this behemoth, I will be casting on my next shawl, which I cannot wait for. I am gonna make the Marled Magic by Stephen West, and I have been gathering my scraps for it, and I'm super duper stoked. I got the pattern. I've started reading through it a little bit, and oh, I cannot wait to finish this and cast that on. And that's another, like, massively epic shawl, so I know that's gonna take a long time, too. And I'm casting that on because um, there's a knit-along that's gonna be happening for it, hosted by uh, Jinx Yarns, who is Laura, and by Volenvine, who is Kristen. And I'm really excited that they're doing that knit along. So I'm totally gonna join in. Speaking of Kristen, check out my, uh, my beautiful little pile of Oracle back there. Did you guys cast on the Oracle? The pattern came out like a few, cat fight. That's what was happening, cat fight. <laughs> the pattern came out a few weeks ago. I was one of the test knitters. That is my version back there. And I sure hope that you guys cast one on too because it's awesome. Okay, moving on to whip number two. Which is living in the biggest project bag that I own because this is going to be a very large project. This is my brownstone pullover. which is a pullover pattern by Jared Flood. The pattern was written for Brooklyn Tweed yarn, but I am using Cascade 220 Superwash in navy, okay? Also, in silver gray. Now this is the Cowboys pullover. And this is a gift knit for my mother's boyfriend who really wanted a cowboy's smoking jacket. So I am making him this pattern, which has a shawl collar, which is what he wanted. And it is cowboys themed, which is a football team in case you didn't know, because I wouldn't have known that without him. Here's what I have so far. This, the, the, these are the sleeves. I am doing them two at a time on size seven needles on is this a 40 inch cord <gasps> i wonder if my other cord is longer no that's i bet okay so i said i think i said that the rebel shell was on a 40 inch cord but i think that's wrong i think it's on like the 32 or something 
This is the 40 inch cord. Now I'm doing magic loop two at a time. I am not necessarily enjoying that. I usually really like doing sleeves two at a time, but these sleeves are big. So they're taking up like the whole cord. So when I'm actually knitting it, I have to like super bunch them up and like hold them really tight so that they don't like slide everywhere. So I'm considering taking them off two at a time and finishing up, up one at a time because they're only going to continue to get bigger because I'm still in the increases. Um, I don't know though. I'm kind of stubborn with stuff like that. Like I already started it two at a time and I'm like, pretty dang far. I'm more than halfway done. And it would be super cool if I could just continue doing it this way and finish with two sleeves finished. So I don't know. We'll see. I have got my little chocolate chip progress keeper on here. Chocolate chip cookie. That's what it is. And I love it. So the pattern calls for you to do the sleeves first. So I did them cuff up, two by two ribbing on the cuff. I went down a needle size, which the pattern did not call for, but I do always like to do that. And I did a couple stripes of the silver gray here, and I am just knitting along stockinette. This is super fun, except for the fact that it's two at a time and it's kind of bugging me. Um, but other than that, I just, I love stockinette. And stockinette and worsted is like so satisfying because it's quick and it's fun. So this is coming along. I did put it down for, I haven't touched it in a few days because of the two at a time thing. But I'm gonna keep doing two at a time and see if I can handle it. And if it just like super starts to bug me again, I'm just gonna separate them and do them one at a time and have to keep track separately. It'll be fine. And my plan with this sweater is to knit the thing mostly in navy. I will do those two stripes of silver gray on the bottom two above the hem. And then I'm gonna go back in later and duplicate stitch on a star, which is the Cowboys logo. It's gonna be awesome. And I'm knitting the extra large size. This will be the biggest sweater that I've ever knit because I've only ever knit sweaters for myself. And I always knit like the smallest size because I'm a small person. Um, but my mother's boyfriend is a big guy. So <laughs> this is going to be a really big sweater. I've got a lot of yarn and we'll see how it goes. I'm excited to get the sleeves done and start on the body. Um, the body is bottom up and then you join the body and the sleeves and do a yoke. Or maybe it's raglan. I don't know. I don't know why I said that. I'm just making stuff up. You do something. I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> Okay, so what else? What else? That's it. Here's some sleeves. It's going good. I like it. Brownstone. Woohoo. Okay, on to my next whip. <laughs> I got it. This is also living in a Fat Squirrel Fibers project bag, as was my last one. And this is another sweater. This is a sweater for myself. I am knitting two sweaters at the same time. Can you believe it? I don't ever do that. That's awesome. I'm super proud of myself. So I talked about how I wanted to cast on with this yarn, which is Blue Moon Fiber Arts Socks That Rock Medium Weight, which is their sport weight. It's a sock yarn, but um, I've got four skeins of this, I think. I forget. I have the right amount of skeins. I just can't remember right now. <laughs> but I've had this in my stash for a long, long time. I got it probably a couple of years ago. And it's 100% superwash merino high twist yarn. And I love it. And I've always wanted to make a sweater out of it. This is the colorway Bittersweet. And I think it's beautiful. And here's my swatch. It's super cool. And I decided, as I talked about last episode, to cast on the Even Flow sweater, which is a sweater by Hohi Locatelli. And I love Hohi Locatelli's patterns. And this is what I have so far. So this was 
This blue yarn that you see down here is the provisional cast on and she gives a specific technique that she recommends because she likes it in the pattern on how to do a provisional cast on and I loved it. I'd never used it before. Usually I just do a crochet chain with a crochet hook and then pick up stitches. Um, but she suggests a different method and I loved it. Um, and I'll tell you what it is because it's not like her made up method or anything. She links to it. It is the method, I don't know what it's called either, but it's the method where you use a crochet hook and a knitting needle and you pretty much crochet the chains around the knitting needle. So instead of having to pick up stitches at the end, all your stitches are just crocheted onto the needle. So it kind of eliminates a step and I really liked it. This um, is the back bottom of the sweater. So right now it's bottom up. I'm knitting the back back and forth in this super awesome slip stitch pattern. I hesitated with this sweater for a while because this is an all over texture pattern that's all on the back of the sweater and on the front panels a little bit at least on the side panels at least and all over texture patterns usually scare me away because texture isn't my favorite thing to knit alternates between knit and pearls aren't my favorite things to knit especially for an all over pattern um so usually I shy away from stuff like that, but I really liked the sweater and I really wanted to knit it. And it turns out this is just a slip stitch pattern. It's not like textured the way that I usually think of texture. So I have really, really been enjoying working on this texture pattern. I love it. It's so fun. It's super quick. It's like way quicker than I thought it was going to be. And I am knitting this on a size six. And these are my Knit Picks wooden interchangeable needles. I started this sweater on my Haya Haya Sharps, but this yarn on those needles were not was not working for me. It was just, the needles were just too slick for this. You know, sometimes I really like how slick the Haya Haya's are, but for some projects it just isn't comfortable. Um, so I decided to try the wooden ones and it was, it made a world of difference. It made it so much more comfortable than it. I don't know. You know, I don't know what the difference is. It's just this particular yarn. I like the wood needles better. So I love working on this so far. It's a really beautiful... <laughs> it's a really beautiful sweater pattern that is of a style that I really enjoy. It's kind of a drapier cardigan with big fat neckband panels. It's got like a really tall scrunched up collar, I guess. And I really, really like that. I, it's, this is the style of cardigan that I love. I either really love this kind of like longer, drapier, flowier cardigan or a really fitted cropped cardigan. I don't much go for the types of cardigans that are like fitted and longer. Those don't really work well with my body. Um, so this is perfect. I cannot wait. My gauge was a little bit off from the pattern, um, but I have decided that it's going to be fine. <laughs> I think if anything, the whole thing's going to end up being a little bit smaller than the measurements in the pattern, but that is fine with me because I know my body and I know I've read the pattern and uh, I think it's going to work. So I'm super stoked on this. I have been loving working on this, which is so cool because I was scared of having to do a whole back piece in this pattern, but it's great. I love it a lot. And this cardigan is my entry into the Knit That Sweater Cal, which is a, a knit along being hosted by Lara of the Fawn Knits, um, which is a knit along where you can knit sweaters, and she pretty much says that sweater you've been wanting to knit but you haven't yet, knit it. So that's what I'm doing. And I am really excited about that. So that's all my knitting this week. I've been pretty monogamous. A couple of sweaters and a shawl. I am pretty happy with it. I did do some sewing, and I made a Megan dress by Tilly and the 
buttons. And this is my third project for my personal Love It For Stitch sewing project. I am attempting to sew every pattern in this book, Love It For Stitch, which is a Tilly and the Buttons book. And basically the idea in this book is that you sew the patterns from beginning to end and progressively you learn more skills. So I'm on my third one right now and I am wearing it. So this is the Megan dress. It is a dress that is not particularly my style, but I wanted to make it anyway as a challenge and it came out great. I'm super duper happy with it. So I'm gonna get up and show you. Here she is. Um, it's made out of twill fabric. And it's pretty short. It is shorter than my dresses usually go. Um, but I'm pretty dang happy with it. It's really... I'm coming back, I'm coming back. It's really pretty thick material. Um, it's a stretch twill, so it's got a lot of structure to it. And this garment has a lot of structure to it. It's pretty, it feels really formal. It's like really kind of stiff and thick and like weighty. Um, it's a little, you know what it is? It's a little businessy for my style. I feel like when I wear this dress, I should be like carrying a briefcase and wearing high heels and like, like, what do you call them? <laughs> like nylons, like really nice nylons. <laughs> Um, none of which I do, except for the high heels. I do love high heels. Um, but I did wear it to work one day and I felt like way overdressed, but I did it anyway and it was fun. Um, I like, seriously, I feel like a high power businesswoman wearing this dress. I seriously feel like I need to get a briefcase to be wearing it. <laughs> um, it's a lovely dress and it doesn't have to be this formal. I've got this really structured black fabric, um, but in the book, she uses really playful material, and I think it could be dressed down with some more playful material. Um, but it's got these super cute little puff sleeves, which like, I'm pretty proud of. I don't usually wear puff sleeves, but I think they look pretty okay. Um, and it's got, so here's, let's talk about my boobs for a minute. <laughs> it's got this line right here. And then this right here was not supposed to be a dart. In the pattern, it is a gather. And as we have learned, by we I mean me, by the Anna dress pattern, bust gathers do not work for me. They look horrible. And because I wanted to like really kind of try to stick to the pattern on this one, I did the original bust gathers and it just looked so stupid. <laughs> does not work for me. Um, so I jankily went back in and just after the whole dress was finished, the whole entire thing was finished and it had the gathers and it looked dumb. Um, I just went back in, turned the thing inside out and kind of like pulled on the gathers and just made them in, into darts after the fact, which is not the way you want to do it, but that's the way I did it. And I think it worked fine. I mean, I think they look pretty good. Like you can tell they weren't originally supposed to be like that, but I think it looks a lot better than the gathers did, like a lot better. Um, and it does have an invisible zipper, which I've talked about invisible zippers before. And I used to have this invisible zipper foot. I still have it. I just don't use it anymore. That totally sucked. And I'm not sure if it sucked because it didn't go with my machine or if it sucked because it was just sucky, but it sucked. And it made me dislike doing invisible zippers. But I got a new one and it's wonderful. It's like way better. Um, and I will link to it in the show notes, the one that I have. I have a Janome machine, so I'm not sure like how universal it is, but it worked really well. And it made this invisible zipper super easy. So this is the Megan dress. I am super happy with it. Um, I am excited to get to the next pattern in the book, which is a gathered skirt. And I have this, I'm gonna go get it. It's, I'm, gonna go, I'm just gonna show you, I'll be right back. 
I have this hot pink linen fabric that I'm going to use for it. So this is one and a half yards of lightweight linen. And it is so bright and so beautiful. I cannot wait to make a skirt out of this. It's going to be amazing. So it's pretty much going to have, I think like a thick waistband and then gathers and then it's just straight down. It's one of those skirts where you like cut a rectangle, cut a couple rectangles and then gather them at the top and do a waistband and a zipper. So I'm super excited about that. I cannot wait. I love this fabric so much. I think this is my favorite fabric in like the whole collection of fabrics that I have ready to go for these patterns. So that's going to be fun. Um, this was, a, it wasn't a challenging pattern, but it was definitely a more involved pattern than I'm used to doing. Um, my favorite sewing patterns so far have been like the super simple ones. And this has got a lot more elements to it than a lot of the other ones that I've enjoyed. It was super fun to make and I'm super happy with how the fit came out. Um, I did do a weird thing with it. <laughs> so I put the whole thing together. I cut it out as you were supposed to. I did not make a muslin, which in the book, this is the pattern that it says, now you'll learn how to make a muslin. You should make a muslin before you make the dress. I did not do that. I've never made a muslin and I kind of doubt I will unless it's like something super important. Like I've thought about if I would have made my wedding dress, which I didn't, um, but if I was into sewing when I got married, I would have. And if I would have made my wedding dress, I would have made a muslin. But I can't really think of anything I would actually make a muslin for. I am so a fly by the seat of your pants sort of person when it comes to many things, especially sewing. So, and I've got, I've had a lot of fails. I've had a lot of stuff that like doesn't really fit and I don't really wear that often, but it's just how I am, y'all. Can't change it. I'm not doing muslin. I can't. I suggest you make muslin because I don't want to be giving out bad advice. <laughs> but um, I did not. And when I put the thing together, the whole thing fit fine. But if I had sewn it completely with the seam allowances, it would have been way too wide. Um, so I sewed the whole thing with the seam allowances as suggested. And then when I went in to put the zipper in, so I had like the whole thing made and the whole back was just open. Um, and I tried it on and I pulled the back pieces together farther than they were supposed to go, overlapped them and then pinned them where it was gonna fit. Um, and then sewed the zipper in like, so the seam allowance is supposed to be like that much from the edge of the fabric. I sewed the zipper in like that much from the edge of the fabric. So my side seams are probably farther back than they're supposed to be, but it worked. <laughs> I think it fits really, really good. So that is my sewing for this week. I'm super proud of it. I think it came out great. Um, I just need some kind of high power business meeting to go to or like a super fancy event. I actually also, so I wear this dress and I feel like I need to be at a business meeting or a funeral. I feel like this is an appropriate funeral dress too. And I actually thought about it because I am going to a memorial tomorrow, which... Super sad, but anyway, um, very good friend of mine. You guys didn't know him, but he was like literally my favorite person ever. Anyway, um, I was like, okay, so I am going to a memorial tomorrow. Like, should I wear this? Cause I, I, when I first made it before he passed away, I thought this was gonna be super appropriate for a funeral, but it's not gonna be, I'm not gonna wear it. Cause this, it's a memorial, not a funeral. And it's gonna be really, it's supposed to be more casual and more of a celebration of life than a funeral. Um, so I need a super formal rich person funeral, I think, to go to, to wear this. Anyway, let's stop talking about funerals. Oh my gosh. <laughs> let's move on from sewing to shop update. So I had a shop update last week. Thank you so much for those of you who came. Um, and then my next scheduled shop update is for next Saturday, but I'm going to put it up early because I am going to be having a Labor Day sale. I'm really excited about this. Labor Day is my 
favorite holiday of the year. I love Labor Day. I love, I love, I love Labor Day. It's my favorite. So I'm super excited about it. I'm always excited about Labor Day. I cannot wait. So Labor Day is September 4th and I'm gonna be having a Labor Day sale for 20% off everything in my shop running from August 31st through September 4th. It's gonna be for 20% off, so I'm gonna put everything that I have ready for the shop into the shop on August 31st. Um, I'll do it sometime in the morning, probably 10 o'clock, but it might not be a hard set 10 o'clock. Um, and I'm really excited. There's gonna be no coupon code that you have to use. Everything's just going to be 20% off. So check that out if you want to. It's to celebrate my favorite holiday, which is Labor Day. Um, if you know anything about me, you know that I'm a pretty proud person. Um, when it comes to certain aspects of my life, one of them being being a member of the working class. I was raised by working class parents, by kind of a lower working class family. And I was raised to be really proud of it. So I love the holiday that celebrates the working class. I love the holiday that says to, that is supposed to say to all working people, take the freaking day off and don't go to work. Like it's a day to celebrate. All of the people in society who keep it running, you know? Everybody who does what they do to keep our society going. And I love it. I love, I love Labor Day. It's my favorite. So I hope you get the day off for Labor Day. I know there are a lot of people who don't get the day off. I know there are a lot of people who do the type of work to where you don't ever get a day off. But I hope, I know that all of you who watch are amazing people who contribute to your community in your own way. And I am going to celebrate all of you on Labor Day. <laughs> um, I hope that you check out the shop because um, I want to offer a little bit of a discount to celebrate in my own way. Um, on Labor Day itself, which is September 4th, which is a Monday, I don't have to go to work. I'm so excited. I am going to chill out all day on that day by myself and craft. Um, my husband doesn't have to go to work either, but he is a musician and he loves to crazy book himself gigs on every, on all the days off. So he's, I think he's playing like two shows on Labor Day. So that is awesome. I'm super happy for him. It's going to be super fun. I might go, but probably not because I'm such a homebody that I'm probably going to stay home. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so Labor Day celebration, August 31st, I'm putting a bunch of stuff up into the shop, including my Halloween colorway that I have created. I'm not going to show you yet, but I'm super excited about it. It's going to be in the shop. Okay, okay, Labor Day. What's next? Favorites. So this week in my favorites segment, I'm going to talk about books because I've been like crazy reading lately it's I am like the worst when it comes to like taking breaks from reading I love books I love fiction I love reading but I tend to slow down a lot for big chunks of time and I finally after I've been reading it I think for like six months now I finally finished the book that I was reading I was listening to it actually um, which is a Haruki Murakami book called 1Q84, and this is a classic novel. I believe it was written in the 80s. Yeah, 80s. And I know there are some Murakami fans who watch this podcast, and it is like one of his most popular books. And I finally just read it, and I, I'm a huge Murakami fan. I love, love him. He is one of my very favorite authors of all time. And... I finally finished 1Q84. I listened to the audiobook. It was very long, very, very good. Um, it's epic. It's one of these crazy sprawling stories that has so many elements to it. There's just like 
so much in this novel to break down. There's so much to think about. I wish I was part of like a literature class at a college who read this book because I want like group discussions to happen about it so that we can like talk about all the weird little things in it. But pretty much it's, it's an epic novel. It's super long. Um, the genre, if I had to give it one, is magical realism. It's a story that takes place in the real world, in modern times, um, but it's got magical elements to it. So it's got things about the world of the book that are unrealistic. And it's, it is magical. It's amazing. It's so good. It's a story of personal journeys. It's a story about love and about institutions. It's really good. Um, yeah, check it out if you're interested. Um, Murakami is a modern Japanese author and he just writes the most fantastic stories. I love them so much. And then after I finished 1Q84, I started another book that I've been wanting to read ever since it came out, which was Neil Gaiman's uh, Norse Mythology. I am also a huge fan of Neil Gaiman, especially, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, I'm not sure if it's Gaiman or Gaiman or whatever. I don't know how to say it, <laughs> but I always say Neil Gaiman, so there you go. Um, I am a huge fan of his novel American Gods, also of his no novel Anansi Boys. I know American Gods is super well known. A lot of people have read it because it's amazing. Anansi Boys, I think, is a lesser known one, and it's kind of a offshoot of American Gods, and it's... I might love it even more than American Gods. It's so good. And those two books are novels set in modern times based on elements of Norse mythology, and they're awesome. Now, he came out with this book called Norse Mythology, I think earlier this year, and it's a retelling of old stories. That's pretty much what it is. He takes Norse mythology, which are stories that have been told in the past by other authors, and he pretty much takes a collection of everything he's read about the characters in North, Norse mythology and just retells the story in his own way. And it was really fun. I loved it. I listened to it and he himself read it, which I always love. I love it when an author reads an audiobook. And it was so much fun. I listened to that thing quick. Um, I don't really know how long it is. It's hard for me to say when I do audiobooks, but I think I listened to it in like a week. It was like super quick because it was just so good. I couldn't stop listening to it. So if you're interested in mythology and old stories, check it out. The audiobook version is great because he reads it and I love his voice. And now I am reading A Court of Thorns and Roses. Is that what it's called? Yeah, A Court of Thorns and, Thorns and Roses, um, which is, I guess it's fantasy. It's... I am used to Tolkienian fantasy. I really, really like that kind of fantasy. This is more like... It's... <laughs> I want... Okay, this is... I don't know if everybody's gonna agree with me here, but I feel like it's kind of Fifty Shades of Grey meets fantasy. It's It's got fairies and humans, and it's a love story, pretty much. Um, and it is really fun. It's by Sarah J. Mass. I realized I started listening to this book um, because Kristen on Yarngasm mentioned that she was listening to it and she was really enjoying it. So I just went and got it. I was like, whatever, F it. I'm just going to go get it and read it. And I didn't even know who wrote it or anything. I couldn't even remember what it was called. I just, <laughs> I've just been listening to it nonstop. And it's super entertaining. It's really, um, it's fluff. You know, it, it's... It's super fun. It's, it just, it goes and goes and goes and you just keep wanting to listen to it until you're done. And I'm like almost done with the first book. And it's kind of long. 
I've just been listening to it like nonstop. It is really cutting into my podcast time, which is like super sucky, <laughs> but it's addicting. It's super addicting. It's a story about fairies and humans and it's a love story. So yeah, it's good. I like it. Um, and that's it. Thank you for being here. I am pretty much coming to a close in this week's podcast. I feel like I should have that music, you know, that like closing music that they have in like Mr. Rogers. If I could like model my show after Mr. Rogers, I would be so happy. When I was planning this podcast, like before I actually started recording, I pictured it as Mr. Rogers, like that format, that setup. I really wanted somehow to like, like not know that the camera was there and like be knitting, you know? I really wanted to like start the very first episode of this show just like this, like. Oh, hello. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I really wanted it to be like really um, vintage and Mr. Rogers y and like, even like me sitting here knitting and not knowing the camera was there and like the camera like panning in from far away and then like you approaching me and just being me like, oh, hello, you're here with me. Hmm. Let's, let's get into this. Obviously, I didn't do that because I'm not. If I was a better cinematographer, which I'm not a cinematographer at all, this show would be much more like Mr. Rogers. We would take tours of like freaking mills and stuff. And like, remember the like factory segments he would have where he would take you into the factory and you would like see like, oh, I loved it. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the episode this week. I had a really fun time recording it. I. I'm so happy to be back. I missed you guys last week so much. Um, last week, I I decided to take the week off. It was a rough week for humanity. And I didn't want to podcast. So I didn't. Um, so I took that Friday last week to myself. I did a lot of knitting, a lot of self-reflection. Um, I did some working. I did some dyeing. And I watched a lot of podcasts and it made me really sad that I wasn't podcasting because I was jealous of every podcast that I was watching because they had so much fun and I wanted to do it too. <laughs> but, um, but I didn't. I gave myself the week off. Um, but I am super happy to be back this week. I am super excited to come back next week as well. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you did, um, give it a thumbs up if you want to. Subscribe if you want to. Um, check out... The Moonstone Dye Works Etsy shop this next week for the big Labor Day sale. If I don't, I will talk to you before Labor Day. So I'm gonna be talking about Labor Day again, wishing you guys a good Labor Day again next week. Um, have fun, stay awesome, bye guys. <laughs>